Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. Uh, this is being prepared for release on Monday, May the 7th. And once again, we have in studio with us the gentleman who wrote this book. It's called For Zion's Sake, Christian Zionism and the Role of John Nelson Darby. And we're going to be talking about Zionism with our guest, Paul Wilkinson. Paul, welcome once again back to Prophecy in the News. Thank you very much. Paul is from England, and uh, he's representative of a church. In fact, the church is called Hazel Grove Full Gospel Church. The title of it is, is right here on this DVD. You'll learn about the DVD later. Right now, I, I want to talk about the subject matter in your book. And, and let's discuss Zionism, because Zionism is a hot issue right now, and our audience needs to know what's happening. Yeah, Zionism is a, a very hot issue because... You know, in 1948, the State of Israel was reestablished, and that's what we believe to be a, a modern-day miracle by, by God's hand. But the, the, the anti-Zionist camp is very large. It has tremendous um, energy. Uh, it's very, very active, and a lot of that activity is, is, is rooted in a, a revisionist um, history, a rewriting of history, trying to portray the early Jewish settlers that went back to the land of Israel, fulfilling Bible prophecy, as somehow having stolen the land from the Palestinian people mm -hmm. that had lived there for centuries. Well, I mean, these things are lies, but they're being peddled as truth, and it's, it's propaganda. And the thing with propaganda is, you keep telling this loud enough and often enough, it sticks in people's minds. So the world has been persuaded that the, that the Zionists um, the Jewish people that went back to the line, land did so illegally, uh, and that it's, it's the poor Palestinian people that are being persecuted, that it's their land that's being occupied. The world has swallowed this lie, and sadly, many of our brothers and sisters in Christ have and are swallowing this lie as well. So uh, Zionism really uh, came to the fore at the end of the 19th century. A man by the name of Theodore Herzl was shaken when he witnessed the trial of a, a Jewish officer in the French army called Alfred Dreyfus uh, being publicly condemned and uh, consigned to Devil's Island in, in South America. Um, all kinds of trumped up charges were made against him. And as Theodore Herzl, uh, an assimilated Jew, not an Orthodox, not an Orthodox Jew, he was a journalist, um, he, he witnessed this trial uh, in Paris and he heard the cry from the Paris Parisian people, Amor les Juifs, death to the Jews. And he realized something is seriously wrong. Why is it at the end of the 19th century that the Jewish people are still being hunted and hounded and persecuted? Mm. As they had been for centuries with the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, uh, the pogroms in, Rus in Russia, and, and we know what happened in the you know, 1930s and 1940s sure. with the Holocaust. So, you know, Zionism came about as a movement, a political movement that tried to provide a homeland for the Jewish people, a solution to this age-old problem of anti-Semitism. Now, some of the people that helped Theodore Herzl were Christian ministers. In fact, I wanted you to talk about Wil William Heschler, because William Heschler worked hand-in-hand -hand with Herzl, and Heschler uh, really got his spiritual upbringing from uh, a, a, the group founded by John Nelson Darby in, in England. That is, Heschler studied uh, in the methods of study used by, by the Brethren in England, and that had been founded by John Nelson Darby. So there's a connection between Darby and the First Zionist Congress in 1897. Absolutely. I mean, Heschler was a, a chaplain in Vienna. Um, he was connected with the London Society for the Promotion of Christianity Amongst the Jews, which was founded in 1809. Mm -hmm. Today it's the church's ministry amongst the Jewish people. And he understood from the scriptures, from his study of the scriptures, that God had not finished with the Jewish people, and that mm -hmm. one day the Jews would be restored to the land of Israel. And he saw that in his own lifetime. So in 1896, February 1896, he sees this book on the... In, in, the, in the shop window, Der Judenstadt, published by Theodor Herzl. Der Judenstadt is the German for the Jewish state. Mm -hmm. And he reads this book and, and, and reads about Herzl's manifesto and his plan to resettle the Jewish people in the land of Palestine, to make a homeland for the Jewish people. 
And so what William Heschler does is he comes knocking on the door of Theodore Herzl and says, I'm your man. The Lord has sent me mm. to give you um, access to the, the powers of Europe that you need to access in order to, to bring this plan of, of restoring the Jews to the, the land so into fruition. The, I guess the bottom line is Christians were being used of God to help bring the Jews back into the land as prophesied. And you know, this story is often buried. Uh, we don't hear much about this, and people really need to hear about it, hence books like this one right here. You should read this book, by the way. Yeah, the book looks at the origins of Christian Zionism, and that very label itself has become a dirty word. Absolutely. You know, as if Christians like ourselves that <coughs> believe the Word of God, we're, we're endorsing a political Zionist agenda. Well, that's not the case at all. William Heschler was one of many clergymen that st simply believed the Bible. And that's the support that he gave, that biblical theological support to men like Theodore Herzl. So if you read Herzl's diaries, you read that it was Herzl himself that coined this term Christian Zionist. He makes a mention of two a clergymen called uh, Mr. Biddulf and uh, uh, Reverend Bramley Moore, and he describes them as Christian Zion enthusiasts. Right. Um, William Heschler, we've been talking about, he was publicly acknowledged from the platform by Herzl in Basel, Switzerland at the First Zionist Congress as a Christian Zionist. You know, Jean-Henri Dunant, the founder of the Red Cross, the first recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, was referred to as Theodore Herzl as a Christian Zionist. So it was Jewish Zionists that used this term to describe Christians that gave them support, even it's if they didn't have the same biblical understanding as their Christian friends. So that term then has, has historical legitimacy. Absolutely. That's the point. And, and you know, there were so many uh, uh, in Britain in those days who were believers. Uh, General Allenby, who rode into Jerusalem in 1917, was a believer in Bible prophecy. General Ord Wingate, a very powerful British general, was a follower of the Brethren movement. He was a, a, a member of that Bible study movement. The Lord used early Christians mightily to aid Israel's return to the land. And this is the story, right? This is the story. And I focus primarily on John Nelson Darby and the, the people that he influenced in the UK by simply interpreting the Bible literally. And if you do that, you realize that the Lord Jesus Christ could come back at any moment for his church and that the Lord will one day restore Israel as a nation, uh, fulfilling numerous Bible prophecies. And I also write in the book about John Nelson Darby's seven tours of North America, which took place from 1862 to 1877. Mm -hmm. He came over here. He proclaimed the message of the Lord's second coming and the rapture of the church and the restoration of Israel, called on Christians here in the United States to get serious about studying the Word of God. And so he was very influential with people like James Hall Brooks, Arno Gabelin, Cyrus Schofield, you know, some of the oh, pioneers yes. and founders <coughs> of the, the, the American Bible Prophecy Conference movement and, and men that became... The, the, the fathers of dispensationalism well, here in the States. of course. States. The fathers, like C.I. Schofield, his fam famous study Bible published in 1909. Uh, I have my, my well-worn copy of the old Schofield study Bible. And, and in fact, I have more than one copy of it. And, and it's amazing the insight that those, those men had at that early time. It's astounding. And, and it was the Lord that brought them together for the purpose of getting Israel moving back into the land. You know, it's been said that uh, World War I was fought to uh, give the land to Israel. Uh, World War II was fought to bring Israel back to the land. And now we're looking ahead at a World War III, which the Bible tells us is going to establish Israel as the kingdom nation. And all of this is being done by the hand of God. And we as Christians need to, to aid the Lord's purpose whenever, wherever we can. And, and you need to avail yourself of the wisdom, of the history, uh, uh, the, the theology that's contained in this book. It's called, For Zion's Sake, Christian Zionism and the Role of John uh, Nelson Darby. A wonderful book, thirty nine ninety five. And by the way, with it comes two one-hour videos on the whole current development of the situation 
uh, in modern Zionism. Darby and Christian Zionism, Christian Palestinianism, The Church at Christ's Checkpoint, a wonderful booklet. Uh, all of these, all four items, yours for thirty nine ninety five. Uh, when you call the 800 number on your screen and ask for the Paul Wilkinson package, the Paul Wilkinson package. Uh, you can tell I'm excited. I really am. This is a pet subject with me mm. as a Christian. It's one of the most exciting things you can study about, right? Absolutely, because this is very much in the heart of our Lord himself. And he's revealed in the scriptures how he feels about Israel, how he feels about the city of Jerusalem, how he feels about the Jewish people. And first and foremost, for us as, as Christians, how he feels about the church. And, and that is something that we are very much burdened about at Hazel Grove for Gospel Church, is supporting and encouraging our brothers and sisters in the wider church and, and, and telling them that Jesus is coming soon, that he loves his bride, you know, and he, he knows he's mm -hmm. the good shepherd. He knows where each one of us as his sheep and his lambs are. He knows the, the battles that we face, the trials that we, we go through, the opposition that comes against us. And the Lord would encourage us just to stand firm, to look for, for everything that we need to come from him and, and to be looking and watching and longing for his appearing because it's the Lord Jesus Christ, not the church, the Lord Jesus who is the solution to the world's problems. There will only be peace on earth when the Prince of Peace returns to Jerusalem. Well said. Paul Wilkinson, uh, the Lord's blessings be upon you. May he prepare a path for you. And by the way, to, uh, to his church back uh, in England, uh, the Hazel Grove Full Gospel Church, our blessings, our, our salutations and good wishes to you all. And uh, keep up the good work. You know, I could go on for another hour, but we're out of time. And so, uh, Paul, Godspeed. And to the rest of you, keep looking up.